Welcome to the sharing tree. My name is Carly, also known as Miss Sunny, and today we're going to do a class and we're going to talk about 101 ways to use the paper towel. All right, well, I'm excited. I'm coming to you from the sharing tree, and what we do here is amazing art. This creative thinking, um, it just can't be beat, and you have to use it when you're a child, but also throughout your entire adult life. So, uh, we honor that here in that process. And we use a lot of weird and wacky things like these are old plastic water bottles, okay? And our space is really just amazing for creativity. And so I'm gonna show you a little bit about our space. I'm gonna show you around just a little bit. We have our wonderful stage area here. How lovely costumes. We have our big blue blocks. We have, of course, our kitchen area, sponsored by no other than Krispy Kreme. We have our lovely climbing tree back there. Every sharing tree organization needs a climbing tree. And of course, we have our space station and astronaut, which I painted. And then you come over here, we have a tinker lab, a mini bank area, we have a doctor's area, and look how fun. And then, of course, don't forget our Lego wall. We have a huge art space in the back over here. And it really just goes on for days. It's 5,000 square feet. Outside we have our bounce house getting cleaned out right now. And our outdoor space, we actually even have a UFO out there if you even would believe me. So once things get real and, and much better and healthy and safe, we hope you guys come visit. But I just wanted to show you a little bit about where we're coming from. And now we're gonna delve in to the art making, which of course is everyone's favorite part. So in the playing, right, Zaid? Zaid is my son, he's over there playing. So everyone loves to play here, but we also make a lot of art. And everything we do, we try to say you have to think creatively. With creativity and a little bit of paint, you can transform trash to treasure. And we really started on that whole premise. What are some things you might do at home that turns trash to treasure? Hmm. We do a lot of these. The plastic water bottles can be turned into flowers. You can also turn those into little planters for your garden seeds, which is really popular right now during garden season. We use a lot of tin cans, and this is a fun project we did with, um, with wire hanging down, and you can use different items to bead through it. They go cling, and they go clang, and it, then it becomes a beautiful wind chime. And you can also use that for a planter and just paint it real nice. You can also use that, mom and dad are not gonna like me after this, for a musical instrument. Bam, 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 bam. So with creativity, like I said, you can really be resourceful and you don't need a lot of super fancy art materials. So um, today I thought it would be kind of clever and fun and funny that we took something that I know for a fact everybody's gonna have in their house, which is dun, 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 the toilet paper roll. So the toilet paper roll, we all have a lot of this. We all know it. Society was going crazy over it for a while. I'm not gonna make any judgments on that. What I am gonna do is I'm gonna say we probably all have one of these lying around and the next time you go to throw that in the garbage, you might think twice about it. Number one, it should always go in the recycling if you're gonna discard it. Number two, maybe you don't discard it. Maybe you think of something else to do. One of the coolest things that I just did recently um, in our garden was you can cut three notches on the bottom of one. You go one, two, three. Okay, then you fold in the bottom. And whenever you start a seed from a packet, it really needs to be in like a nice protected area. So this is good for a seed starter, is what we call these. And you fill it up with a little bit of dirt and your seed. Once you find that sprout, guess what? You can plant this whole thing right directly into the ground. Why, you say? Why would you do that? Maybe that's harmful, but it's not. It actually will all decompose right into the earth and into your garden, so voila seed starter, project number one. 
toilet paper rolls are so versatile. They can be strong, they can be long, you can punch holes in them, you can cut through them, which is fun. You can glue them, you can attach them, which is an amazing capability. You can even fold and bend and sculpt them. So I took this one right here and I made none other than one of my favorite shapes. It's kind of a funky heart here. So let me go ahead and round it out, but use your hands to kind of sculpt this and it can be really any shape you want. I love the shape of a heart. Don't make fun. I'm just going to go ahead and show you there's a better one heart. We do this a lot for Valentine's Day as well, which is an exciting project when you have all the heart stuff. So I'm going to make that a little bit more. You're going to go ahead and get a paper plate or really anything that's flat and some paint and you dip it in and you can actually use this as a stamp. That's what we're going to do all over this page. So I can show you and you can really, you gotta press it into the paint really nice and good, and squish it down and you get that repeated shape over and over and over again. I like this. It's not just, you're like, why would I do that when I can just paint it? Here's why, because you have a different effect. You can mix different colors and you have the lines that just look a little bit more varied than it would if you were to just paint it, okay? So that's why we do different things in art is because not only is that a fun process, it's different than painting, but it looks different. So that's fun too. So that's a sculpting and painting kind of methodology there. That is fun and you can make different cards with that. That's a fun thing to do right now. Fold it up, do your stamping, and then you send it to someone that you've been thinking about, maybe someone who's done something kind for you recently, or someone that you miss, a family member, blah, blah, blah. Just send it in the mail because it's awesome to get things in the mail. All right, so we're gonna move on. On each of these different platforms, I have a different project, okay? This one is awesome. Now for this one, I do suggest a hot glue gun, which is a little with um, students. So make sure you have a parent if you want to help um, with this one. So what I did was I cut the paper towel roll in slices like this. You can see just that skinny. So you just simply cut it. Again, you may need a stronger scissors, but it cuts very easily, which is why I love working with these. Um, we like easy, right? Keep the creativity going by making the process easy. So here I have two circular type shapes. Boop. And what you can do is you can kind of press in one side of them and go like this and you make a flower petal, okay? Now if I glue this side and squeeze it on here, and that's what I would do with the hot glue, and you kind of squeeze it like that, Okay, you start to make different shapes. Now, I've made one of these before. Here's what I ended up with, our lovely flower shape. Now, I've made one of these before where you just keep going and going, and who knows, maybe you have that many paper towel rolls at your house, and you keep going and going, and then the glue, and then you go another layer, and it will end up as big as the mural on the back of the wall and it can be huge and spectacular. And then if you really want to get rowdy with it, you spray paint it, okay? You spray paint it, this beautiful color, you hang it on a wall and I'm telling you, trust me on this one, people will not believe that it's paper towel rolls. This is a true transformation of a material here. I love that project just because of that. And then that aha moment people have when they're, or the, we get that a lot with the plastic water bottles too. People go, oh, I had no idea. I would have never guessed. Well, guess what? Paper towel rolls, okay? Sometimes people go, ew, it's like, mm -mm, no, it was creativity. A little bit of paint. We got this. All right, we're gonna roll in. You know, I'm gonna show you, as long as we're doing this one, I'm gonna show you a few other techniques, right? You paper sculptors um, who are into doing this. So let's say you get that kind of multi-layered flower and you're going out, out, and it ends up just a little bit bigger, right? Well, guess what? You can do little swirly whirls on the end of it to kind of just give it a little bit. Again, I use this word um, variety. 
in art. Um, that is one of our elements because your eyes are attracted by things that are different, right? If you see a wall that's white or you see a wall that has lines and shapes and different colors on it, your eye automatically is more attracted to the, the more diverse and varied wall. Um, it's just one of those things. So I went ahead and made a swirly whirl just by taking, I cut that same flower petal that I had, I cut it right at the end and I swirled it back around. And then you kind of press it, you kind of press it. If you want it tighter on one side, you press it more on that side than the other. And then you kind of let it go up. You see how that now, a little bit tighter of a swirly whirl. Now it looks like a C, the letter C, oop, from backwards. C or G, and maybe you could write your name with it too, that's fun. And then you can glue like this, and you start to get way different shapes in it. And maybe you start to make a whole garden of loveliness. Ba bam That is our lovely multi-layered paper sculpting flower petal art project. All right, moving on to the next one, which I also love. Um, is going to be our wonderful koi windsock. Now, koi fish are spectacular fish in the sea, and I love the sea anyways, but these have a certain allure about them. Um, they're good luck, right, in China and Japan, and they're very symbolic. And um, there's a bunch of beautiful ones at the Tallahassee Nursery in particular that you can go and they go crazy at feeding time. Um, but they have a lot of cultural symbolism in them, okay? And again, good luck and fortune is kind of what they mean. Well, they all make these um, on May 1st um, over in those countries. They have something called Kids Day, and this is a popul popular art project then. So you could do this in any different way. I just took construction paper and some glue and made my fish scales. You could paint it. You could actually take a cork, get this, a cork and some paint. You stamp it in and you do your polka dots like that so you get more of a circular scale and you layer over and over again. And that's a fun way to do it too. So many different ways, but the idea is you wanna make your scales. Now for you advanced students, you can even cut the bottom C of your scale and you can kind of flip it out so you have texture added to it. Now that's complicated. I don't want to complicate this um, because this is really quite an easy and lovely project. So cut your fish scales or paint them. Cut your fish scales out of construction paper or paint them. And again, it's kind of like a backward C and you just repeat over and over and over again. It can look something like that. You can make them individually or you can just make layers of it, which is probably easier. And then wrap it around the body, glue it, let it sit for a minute chill out, go get a drink of water. But this, um, to glue around a circular surface like this is, can be trying. So don't give up. You need to be a hard worker to be good at art. So I would just squeeze it like that and go one, two, three, four, and count to like 20, okay? And voila, you have this beautiful, scaly, wonderful koi fish. Now, in order to make it a cool windsock where these blow in the wind, you're gonna wanna take tissue paper and glue it on the inside and have it coming down like that. Again, this is only if you have tissue paper at the house. Other things you can use, toilet paper. I'm not kidding. You can use toilet paper or paper towel roll. Even Paper towels work even better because you can actually take watercolor and paint the paper towels and then put them on and glue them. Again, you flip it over, glue the inside of it and put your scale or put your um, tissue paper fun on the inside so that you don't see that, okay? So you don't have to worry about being neat with your lines or whatever. Then of course, I just took a simple string and you have your two hole punches here so you can go ahead and hang it in the window or in the wind and it's gonna go like this and it's gonna look awesome and colorful. I like doing that, okay, all right. We are going through this. We are making some moves. Are you ready to see one of my favorite projects of all time? Have I said that for every single project? 
anyways, this one really is. We do a lot of robots and monsters here at the sharing tree, okay? And I've made a few different elements here. Brrr, ah! My monster. So I took a paper towel roll. And again, you're the artist. You get to make these choices. You can either cover it with construction paper or paint it. I like painting it and using construction paper just to be a little bit more difficult because that's how I roll. I wrap this one with the green construction paper and then I'm gonna make lines, like metallic-y, silvery lines. On the outside of him, voila, voila. And then of course your googly eyes, if you have those. Um, I've even went and gotten old buttons and you could glue on buttons because every robot or monster has buttons on them. Things you can press that make them move and stuff. I like pipe cleaners for the arms and that way you just hole punch on the side, right like that and you can take that pipe cleaner and go all the way through, okay? So now you have a really cool and I found a fastener here at the sharing tree. So you, I, again, punched a hole in here, made like a little arm leg so that you can move it. Boom, 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 boom. So you're pressing the buttons, you're moving the arm leg, doing the ninja kick. You got his crazy little swirly arms. So he's also now a toy. He's art and toy and transformation all in one thing. That is our super cool upcycled robot monster man pretty radical. Well, we're going to move on. Okay. So I feel like that project going back to the monster is really, you can do so many different things with it. So people, you could be really simple with it and just be like, I'm done. Or you can really get into it. Like I even took um, a scissors and I made his notched hair. So he looks kind of like a mohawk, like a punk rock robot. Um, and then with his arms, I did the little swirly trick where you kind of wrap it around your finger like that and then let it go. So you got the spiral ribbon trick. You could take yarn and come outside like with the hair. You could do a ponytail or a braid. If you have a little cute girl robot, you can put her in a dress, tissue paper. I mean, there's so many different ways to go with this robot monster. So please explore it. Also, which I think is a cool potential on this project, is you can make it personal or you can make it funny. You can um, have it be an expression of who you are or, and then we, we definitely wanna share our robots and monsters, but this is um, a really fun project and I'm glad you guys are making it with the sharing tree today. Okay. Moving on to creatures made out of toilet paper rolls. We have a shark. And what I did, so a shark, what I did is I cut his mouth like this. I'm gonna stand up and show you. I cut his mouth. If you wanted to go extra points, you um, make the teeth and you glue them again on the inside. You got your googly eyes. I painted him gray. Now this notch that I took out of his mouth, I'm reusing that as his tail. Clever, see? See how that artist brain works? Now the other thing you can do is you can make this into a game. Wait for it. You take hot glue, again, get a mom or dad, don't mess around, we don't need any injuries today. And you put your, um, put your dab of glue in here, put it on a piece of hemp string, you kind of want a stronger piece of string. Glue it on there, you want it to come out to about here. I'm being very specific with my measurements. I would say that's about 10, 12 inches. Then on the other side, you tie something. It could be a bottle cap, it could be a pop tab, it could be a cork, something a little bit heavier, something similar to what a bobber might look or feel like if you ever do any fishing, a bobber or a lure. So then what you do with this is you make a game and that string comes out and you try to catch it in the shark's mouth. And that bobber or lure or cork you try to get in the jackpot. Boom, just like that. So that's a fun added element. And then of course you can paint him different colors, give him scales, different textures, and then he also doubles as a toy. And that's fun. Now this is my zzz, zzz. He needs so 
some color to him. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and give him some color, but he is, he could be a cool bee, okay? He could be a super cool bee. And so I'm gonna help him be a super cool bee. And I'm gonna be a super cool bee. I'm gonna be a super cool bee. A super cool bee. I definitely like to hum to myself when I make art. Don't judge, you can do it too. Okay, friends, give me a break. This is not my best artwork. I'm trying to do things on the timeline here. And uh, apologies, apologies. But this could be a really cute bee. And then you go back to this idea, okay? So you got your pipe cleaners, you got your wings, you got your, your white, you got your yellow and black stripes. You got everything B about him. Now you come back to this concept and you make a honeycomb. That's adorable. So a honeycomb is more like what shape, Zaid? A hexagon, which is kind of hard to sculpt actually. But do the best you can, and then you could do those repeated shapes over and over again, and then you have a honeybee and this honeycomb, and bam, that is a cute little way to do that too. So those are my ideas for what you can do with the toilet paper roll. There's more than that, right? Please share your ideas. You could take this right here and turn this into a flower. So I always tell kids, like it's this part of the this part of the art game, um, there are no wrong answers. I'm just here to give you a few ideas and a few tricks. So what I did was I went ahead and took this paper towel roll and I'm taking the leaves and I'm opening them up. I'm have a few more petals in here. And then you can paint it. But really, I am here just as an art guide and I show you a few different tricks and tools and things that you can use, but now it's your job to take this to the next level, right? And I do believe that most of the time when I have a class that you guys have way better ideas than I had um, or just different and that's okay because there are no wrong answers in art. Isn't that beautiful? You don't have to worry about it. This is no stress zone, okay? We just did this activity today to have fun and to reconnect with all of our lovely friends at Hang Tough, and we miss you guys. I know last year we had a couple of events here for you, so um, if I see any familiar faces, hello. And we're gonna sign out now, but please keep us in mind. I do lessons like this on our Facebook page, so you can check that out. We also do art boxes if you're interested in them, but we are here to help and serve our lovely and amazing community. And together we will get through this and we've got to stay creative and hopeful, okay? So thanks for making art with me today. Again, I'm Miss Sunny and have a beautiful day. I hope you are all healthy, mind, body, and soul.